Hello and Zdrastvuitye. That's the Russian word for hello. And today we're going to be hearing a Russian story in Storytime for Home Time with me, James Mayhew. Now this story is one of my favourite stories in the whole world. It's a wonderful tale all about a prince, a wolf and a firebird. I'm wearing a Russian costume to set the scene. I have some Russian things here like this doll which has lots of other dolls hidden inside it. Can you see that? Behind me, if you look carefully, you can see one of my books. It's called Koshka's Tales, and it's a collection of Russian stories. And it does have a story about the firebird in it. But this one I'm going to tell you is just a little bit different to the one in the book. I hope you enjoy it. Are you ready? Imagine a garden where everything that grows is made of jewels or precious stones. Rubies, diamonds, sapphires, they grow like flowers. The leaves are emeralds. But best of all is the apple tree. For the apple tree grew golden apples. Now this garden belonged to a king, or perhaps I should say Tsar, because that's the Russian word for a king. And this king was very particular about his golden apples. Every day he walked in the garden and he counted them to see how many he had, to see how rich he was. But one day, when he was walking in the garden and counting his apples, he saw someone missing. The next day, more had gone. The king realised that somebody was stealing his golden apples. Now, of course, he was very cross about this. So he said to his three sons, you must guard the tree. I trust no one else but you. If you can capture the thief, I will reward you with jewels and treasures from my magical garden. Well, the three princes ran off and sat beneath the tree, and they were called Dmitri, Fyodor and Ivan. Dmitri, the eldest, and Fyodor were both quite greedy and wanted to get their hands on their father's treasures. But they were also quite lazy, so soon they were fast asleep. But Ivan, oh, he wasn't bothered about the treasure. And he wasn't lazy. He was curious. He couldn't understand how anybody was able to climb over the wall and get hold of the apples. It didn't seem possible because the tree was surrounded by a high stone wall. Now, in the middle of the night, when his brothers were sleeping and Ivan was wide awake, he suddenly saw the sky getting brighter and brighter and there appeared a magnificent bird. A bird with golden burning feathers and she flew down and she landed on the king's golden apple tree. Ivan couldn't believe his eyes and he ran across the grass and he grabbed hold of the firebird's tail.
the feathers were burning hot and hurt his hand badly. And Ivan quickly let go and the firebird flew away. The next morning he showed his burned hand to his father, the king. And the king said, my goodness, I can't believe it. The firebird in my garden? Oh, if only you had captured her. If you had captured her, I would have kept her. Hmm, in a cage of gold. And then I would have been the richest king in all the world. You must capture her, he said. And so the three sons went back beneath the tree and they waited and waited for the firebird to return. But she never did, having been almost caught once. She was too scared to come back and get caught again. And so in the end, the three princes realised they would have to go off and search for the firebird. So they each took a horse from the king's stable and off they galloped. Dimitri to the north, Theodore to the west, and Ivan, he galloped to the east. Now Ivan went into a deep, dark forest, and there he saw an old grey wolf. And the wolf was hungry, and it leapt upon his horse and threw it to the ground. And then the wolf thought, which shall I eat? Shall I eat the horse or the boy? And then the wolf decided, because he was particularly hungry, he would eat the horse. He gobbled it all up in one gulp. And Ivan said, what have you done? You've eaten my horse. Now how will I ever be able to find the firebird, which my father longs for? And the grey wolf laughed and said, Prince, you would never have found the firebird. Only I, the grey wolf, knows where the firebird is. Now you must climb upon my back. I have the power of your horse in my belly. And in return for eating your horse, I will take you anywhere in the world you wish to go. And Ivan said, in that case, I wish to go to the firebird. Then climb on, said the grey wolf. Hold on tight and I will take you. Ivan hesitated. This was a large grey wolf. Was it safe? Was it wise? Well, he was stuck in the middle of nowhere. He decided to risk it. And so he jumped on the back of the grey wolf and the wolf ran along the ground and leapt up into the air and opened his jaws. And he began to fly because he was no ordinary wolf. And he flew and flew and he galloped and galloped over the mountains and forests and palaces and cities of Russia. Faster and faster, higher and higher, across the thrice nine realms, he galloped until at last they reached another land, another kingdom. And here he gently put Ivan upon the ground. This is the land of a terrible wizard, said the grey wolf. His name is Kashche the Deathless. He is called this because he never dies. If you chop off his head or cut him into pieces, everything just grows back by magic. This is because he has used his magic powers to hide his soul. And nobody knows where it is. Because of this, he can never be defeated. You must take great care in his kingdom, said the grey wolf. If the wizard were to capture you, he would likely turn you to stone. Now, in the wizard's garden, there grows an apple tree, very much like your father's. And here you must go and wait for the firebird. But Prince, this time, please be careful and wear a glove. Otherwise, you will burn your hand again. And so Ivan climbed over the wall and went into the garden. And sure enough, there in the middle, he saw a golden apple tree, full of golden apples. And there he sat and waited for the firebird to come. In the middle of the night, 
The wizard's garden got brighter and brighter and brighter, and suddenly there she was, the firebird, even more beautiful than Ivan had remembered. And she flew down and she landed on the wizard's tree and she began to eat the wizard's golden apples. Ivan put on the glove and jumped up and grabbed hold of the firebird and she cried out and said, Oh, Prince, Prince, please don't hurt me. Please let me go. Ivan said, I have to give you to my father, I've promised, but don't worry. You'll be well looked after. He will keep you in a cage of gold. But the firebird looked sad. She said, if you put me in a cage, even one made of gold, I would no longer be fiery and bright. My feathers would turn grey. I would die. When Ivan heard this, he felt sorry for the firebird, and he decided he would set her free. The firebird said to him, Prince, you have done me a great kindness, and in return I will give you something special, a gift. I will give you one of my feathers. This one won't hurt you. It doesn't burn. It is made of gold. Keep it safe. And if ever you're in trouble, wave the feather in the air three times, and I will always come to you. And then as she flew off, the feather fell down onto the grass, and Ivan grabbed hold of it and put it in his hat to keep it safe. Now, Ivan was about to leave the garden when suddenly the doors of a great palace opened and out stepped 13 beautiful princesses, each more lovely than the one before. The 13th was the most beautiful and she bowed down to Ivan and said, my name is Helena. I am the princess of inexhaustible loveliness. And she said to Ivan, what on earth are you doing in this strange garden? If the wizard captures you, he will turn you to stone. Look around at the ground. Do you not see these rocks and boulders? Once they were heroes and knights in armour like you. The wizard captured them and he turned them all into stones. But Ivan wanted to know what the princesses were doing there. And she explained that they had all been captured by the wizard and they had all tried to escape and many heroes and knights had tried to help them, but it was impossible. Ivan said, it must be possible, I'm sure there's a way, I must be able to rescue you. To tell you the truth, he had already fallen in love with the princess of inexhaustible loveliness. She said, no, you must leave at once, if you don't leave now. The wizard, he has, he has spies, servants watching, they will tell the wizard you are here, and he will capture you. It was true. There were goblins and demons hiding in the trees and they saw Ivan and they ran to the palace and they told the wizard that Ivan was there. And he came storming out of the palace and he saw Ivan talking to the princesses and he raised his hands in the air and began to mutter magic words, words to turn Ivan into stone. Now, how is Ivan going to escape? What's going to happen? How will he rescue the princess? Will he ever see his father again? And will his father ever have the firebird in a golden cage? Tune in tomorrow for part two of the tale of Prince Ivan, the grey wolf and the firebird. Thanks for watching Storytime for Home Time. Bye.